At this point, I just wanted to do a little focus on the frequency spectrum. If you started out this course a bit sketchy on the concept of frequencies and what actually makes up a sound, then you might feel things have moved on quite quickly, where I'm all of a sudden referring to fundamental frequencies and technical values in Hertz. So I just wanted to explain a bit more to help with that. On the board here I've got the frequency spectrum, meaning the range of frequencies we can hear, which goes at the bottom from 20 Hertz up to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 Hertz. And you'll often see positions marked along the x-axis at 100 Hertz, 1 kilohertz or 1000 Hertz and 10 kilohertz or 10,000 Hertz. At the very beginning of the course we saw how a sine wave at a particular pitch produces a narrow band centered around a single frequency. So for example a very low C note with a MIDI value of C naught produces a band which looks something like this at 33 Hertz. With C an octave up at 66 Hertz looking something like this. So now that we've got nine different C notes drawn in from C naught up to C8, we can see where each one of those frequencies, every one an octave apart, lies along our scale. So let's take a listen to those now. So you probably noticed that some of those notes appeared louder than others. This very much depends on what speakers you were listening on, but typically the first two notes would have seemed like the quietest. Then the third note at C2 would have appeared to have got a little bit louder, for C2 and C3, then C4 generally seems to get even louder still for those next three notes, and normally C7 at around the 4.2 kilohertz mark would be the most piercing, so the harshest on your ears. And then C8 tends to drop away again and become a little bit harder to hear. So although all of these notes are actually at exactly the same level, it's a good example of how different frequencies can appear louder than others due to the sensitivity of our ears. In real life though, sounds aren't typically sine waves or pure tones and generally contain a whole load of frequencies, which all contribute different things to the sound. Take this glockenspiel for instance. This sound has a few peaks, which will be providing the overriding pitch of the sound, but there are quite a few other frequencies in between these. If we have a listen to them on their own, by using a couple of filters here, so the lowest frequencies start around 200 Hz, in this low mid section, and these add a bottom end to the knocking part of the sound. Above that is the first peak, which is the dominant pitch, or fundamental frequency, so the note you hear as the actual pitch of the sound. And straight above that is the main hammer striking sound, giving the knock more presence. But it's quite thin without those lower frequencies. And then above that we have the additional pitches and frequencies in between, which really change the character of the sound to a more metallic one. So by boosting or attenuating the different frequencies in the glockenspiel, you can drastically transform its character. Here are a couple of extreme examples, just to show you how much can be done. Firstly, I've got one where I've EQ'd out everything apart from the loudest pitches. So we're just left with the peaks, which is the fundamental frequency and harmonics. So all the tuneful parts of the sound.
so you can hear how we lose all of the noisy parts of the sound, which are basically the tuneless, striking sounds. And going the other way, which is a bit more shocking perhaps, I've EQ'd out all of the loudest frequencies, or peaks now, so we lose the most tuneful parts and boost the noisy bits in between. which transforms it into more of a bassy percussion sound now, albeit with a bit of metallic ringing on top still. So here's the frequency spectrum with some ranges marked out now. So you can see the bass range goes from the bottom, or 20 hertz, which is where you start to be able to hear it, up to 250 hertz, and I've also split this into two here, so the sub bass is right down the bottom up to 60 hertz. Then the mids goes from 250 hertz up to 2 kilohertz or 2000 hertz. And this is also split into three, which is sometimes done low mids, mid range, and high mids, which goes from 250 hertz to 500, 500 to 1 kilohertz, and 1 kilohertz to 2 kilohertz. And then the highs are above 2 kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And again, this is split into a couple of sections where Sometimes these, uh, the lowest section of these highs from 2 kHz to 4 kHz is uh, marked off as a presence band, as that's the characteristic that it adds to your mix. And then above that, you've got your brilliance or air. And the other thing I've marked on here, as you can see, is the ear sensitivity, where the 1 kHz to 4 kHz range are the frequencies the ear is most sensitive to. So these are the ones that will most easily tire out your ears. And then at the opposite end, you've got the lowest sensitivity range at the bottom there. So these are the ones your ear is least sensitive to. And as a result, these are the ones that tend to get cranked up so much in a mix. So hopefully from this now, you've got a better idea of the kinds of frequencies in a sound and what the different areas of the spectrum or ranges of frequencies contribute to the sound. And ultimately how this can allow you to use EQ to determine the character of the sound.